Hello and welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 20. In this video, we're gonna learn about subtracting integers. So the lesson objective for today, we're just going to learn how to subtract integers. And the procedure for this is pretty straightforward. If you know how to add integers, then you can automatically subtract integers. So I have here, the first thing you'd wanna do is to leave the first number. And that means the leftmost number of the subtraction problem, we call that the menu end. This is going to be unchanged. So don't mess with that at all. The second thing is you're gonna change the subtraction operation into addition. So instead of a minus, you're gonna put a plus. Then the last thing is to change the second number. So that's the rightmost number of the subtraction problem. We call this the subtrahend. We're gonna put this as its opposite. So just change the sign of the number. So basically you're changing your subtraction problem into addition of the opposite. Let's take a look at a few problems using the number line. I think this is not too bad overall. If you can add integers, then you can subtract integers. It's basically the same thing with just an additional step. So here we have seven minus nine. So before we do anything, let's just think about this logically. If I have $7 in my account, then I can only spend $7 before I go negative. I think we all know that. So if I'm spending $9, well, I'm spending two more dollars than I have, so I should expect to have a balance of negative two. So if I think about this, using my procedure, I would keep the first number unchanged. So just write a seven. Then change this subtraction into addition, and then change the number being subtracted away. In this case, it's nine. You're gonna put that into its opposite. So just change the sign. For positive nine, it would become negative nine. So this is seven minus nine is the same thing as seven plus negative nine. So I have seven and you take nine away from me. It's the same thing as if I said, hey, I have seven and I have a debt of nine and we're gonna settle up, right? So you're taking nine away from me. It's the same thing either way. So when I think about this, using my procedure for adding integers, well, I wanna use the sign of the number with the larger absolute value. The absolute value of negative nine is nine. The absolute value of seven is seven. So negative nine has a larger absolute value. So we get a negative for the result. Now you're just gonna do a subtraction. So you're gonna do larger absolute value minus the smaller. So what is nine minus seven? And this ends up giving me nine minus seven is two. You apply the negative, this is negative two. But we knew that already because we just thought about it logically. If I have $7 in my account and I spend $7, I'm at zero, but I'm spending nine. So I'm spending two more than what I have. So I should expect to be at negative two for my account balance. You can also think about this on the number line. Let's say again, we start out at seven. So this is my account balance here. And I take away nine, or you could say you add negative nine, whatever you wanna do there, you're basically gonna move nine units to the left. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then finally nine. So I started at seven. Notice when I added negative seven or subtracted away seven, I got to zero. And then if I subtract two more away or I add another negative two, I'm going to be at negative two for the result. So seven minus nine, which is the same thing as seven plus negative nine, gives us negative two. Okay, let's look at a similar problem. So here we have five minus 11. So again, if I have $5 in my account and I go through and I buy $11 worth of stuff, I know that I overspent by $6, right? Because if I spend $5, I'm at zero. And then basically I'm gonna spend another six from what I have, so that's gonna put me at negative six. But we can show this by saying that I have five, keep that leftmost number the same. I'm gonna change the minus into a plus, so now this is addition, and I'm gonna change that 11 into its opposite, so that would be negative 11. So this becomes what? Use the sign of the number with the larger absolute value. So negative 11 has a larger absolute value, so this would be negative. And then inside, just subtract the smaller absolute value from the larger. Or you can say the larger absolute value minus the smaller. However you wanna think about that, it's going to be 11 minus five inside. So 11 minus five is six. So this becomes negative six as the answer. Again, using the number line to see this visually, if you need that, here's five. So I start out with $5 in my account and I'm gonna spend 11. So first, let's say we spend five. So one, two, three, four, five units to the left. At that point, I'm at zero. So there's no more money in my account. Well, basically I'm gonna go another six units to the left because I'm spending six more dollars or I'm adding another negative six, however you wanna think about that. So I'm gonna go another one, two, three, four, five, six units to the left to end up at negative six. So basically I started out with five and I added negative 11 or I took 11 away and I went 11 units to the left on the number line. So I end up at negative 
six or I owe six dollars to the bank. However you want to think about that. Okay, we'll do one of these without a number line and then I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'll go back to the number line. So for this one, we have 15 minus 18. So just write this as 15 plus a negative 18. So it starts to become pretty quick for you. Leave this first number unchanged. So 15 is unchanged. Change your subtraction to addition. Change the number being subtracted away into its opposite. So 15 minus 18 is 15 plus negative 18. So the negative 18 has the larger absolute value. So we'll use that sign. And then you're just going to subtract the larger absolute value minus the smaller. So 18 minus 15. So this becomes the negative of 18 minus 15 is 3. So this is just negative 3. Again, if I start with $15 in my account and I spend 18, so I'm taking 18 away from what I have, I would expect to basically have negative 3 because I spent 3 more dollars than what I had. Okay, for this problem, we will return to the number line. So the leftmost number, you'll notice that that's a negative now. So this is actually going to make the problem a little bit easier. So let's just go with our procedure. The leftmost number is negative five. I'm not going to mess with that. I'm going to change my subtraction operation into addition. And then I'm gonna change the number that's being subtracted away. Here that's positive three. I'm gonna put that as its opposite. So this will be negative three. So we can write negative five minus three as negative five plus negative three. And so we have this common sign that's negative. So the answer will be negative. And then you just add the absolute values. So five plus three would be eight. So the final answer here is negative eight. I think it's also useful to see this on the number line. So let's say that I start with negative five. So I'm starting with this leftmost number here. And then whether I think about this as subtracting away three or adding negative three, I'm moving three units to the left. So I'm going one, two, three units to the left. So I started at negative five. I'm going to end up at negative eight. All right, what about negative 56 minus 18? So this would be negative 56 plus a negative 18. So basically, you know this would be negative because that's the common sign. And you could just add 56 plus 18. Some of you can do that in your head. It's gonna end up being 74, but let's just go through this. So six plus eight is 14, four down, carry the one. One plus five is six plus one is seven. So that's 74. So this becomes a negative 74 for your final answer. What about negative 107 minus 29? So let's say this equals negative 107 plus a negative 29. So we know the answer is negative and you're just gonna say, well, what is 107 plus 29? So just add the absolute values. Seven plus nine is 16, six down, carry the one. One plus zero plus two is three. Bring down the one, so this is 136. So again, drag that up there we'll say the final answer is negative 136. All right, now let's talk about something that gives students a lot of trouble in this section, and that is subtracting away a negative is the same as adding a positive. So you might see something like four minus a negative three, and we say that's equal to four plus three. So minus a negative is plus a positive. I'll give you a little bit of an explanation in a moment, but right now let's just use the procedure that we talked about earlier. So for the leftmost number, the menu in is gonna stay the same. So this is four and this is four. The subtraction operation becomes addition. So this is a minus and this is a plus. And then the number being subtracted away, again called the subtrahend, this guy is gonna get changed into its opposite. So the opposite of negative three is positive three. So just following the procedure we already talked about, you would get the right answer. So this becomes four plus three, which we know is seven. You see that I have four minus two equals two, four minus one equals three, and four minus zero equals four. You'll see that each time the number that's being subtracted away or the subtrahend decreases by one, the difference or the result from the subtraction operation increases by one. That should make sense because I'm taking one less away, so the result or the difference should be one larger. So four minus two is two, four minus one is three, four minus zero is four. So now when we get into one less than zero, well, that's gonna be negative one. So I have four minus a negative one, which gives me five. So it's the same thing as if I said, what is four plus one? Well, that's five. Then four minus a negative two, that's four plus two, that's six. Then four minus a negative three, that's four plus three, that's seven. Let's look at some examples. So here we have negative seven minus a negative 20. So this becomes negative seven plus 20. So again, minus a negative is plus a positive. Keep this first number unchanged, change the subtraction into addition. This number right here that's being subtracted away, it's negative 20, it becomes its opposite, which is positive 20. So this is what? The sign of the number with the larger absolute value is positive, and so you're just gonna change this over into 20 
minus 7, which becomes 13. What about negative 13 minus a negative 6? So negative 13 plus 6. Minus a negative is plus a positive. So the sign of the number with the larger absolute value is negative. So this will be a negative and then just subtract the larger absolute value minus the smaller. So this is 13 minus 6. So this becomes negative. 13 minus 6 is 7. So negative 7. What about negative 94 minus a negative 17? So negative 94 plus 17. Minus a negative is plus a positive. So let me say that the sign of the number with the larger absolute value is negative. And then you're just going to go 94 minus 17. So in other words, you're saying the larger absolute value minus the smaller. So 94 minus 17. So this gives me what? Let me borrow here. Put an 8, and this will be 14. 14 minus 7 is 7. 8 minus 1 is 7. So this would end up being negative 77. All right, let's wrap up the lesson. And what we're going to do now is talk about multiple operations. So basically subtracting more than two integers. So when we perform subtraction with more than two integers, the rules are the same. Change each subtraction to addition of the opposite. This is going to help you a lot because remember, addition is commutative. So you can add in any order that you'd like. So here we have 9 minus 3 minus 8 minus 12 minus 4. So let me go equals 9, the leftmost number, not going to mess with that. So I'm just going to copy that. And then everything else, you're going to go plus negative. So this will be plus negative 3, and then plus negative 8, and then plus negative 12, and then plus negative 4. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add all these numbers over here because they're all negative first. right? So I'm just going to keep 9, and then I'm going to say negative plus negative plus negative plus negative is going to be a negative. And then just add the absolute values. So 3 plus 8 is 11. 11 plus 12 is 23. And then 23 plus 4 is 27. So this would be negative 27 here. And I should probably show that in case you were not using a calculator. So let me do that real quick. So 3, 8, you have 12, and then you have 4. Really quickly, 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 plus 8 is 13. 13 plus 4 is 17. So put a 7 down, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So this is 27. That's where I got that from. I know some of you are not using a calculator and you're just getting up to speed with addition. So now we have 9 plus negative 27. So this right here would be a negative because the sign of the number with the larger absolute value is negative. And then you're going to subtract the larger absolute value, which is 27, minus the smaller, which is 9. So let's do that off to the side. So 27 minus 9. Borrow here. This is a 1. This is a 17. 17 minus 9 is 8. Bring down the 1. So this is going to be 18. So we'd have negative 18 as the answer. Okay, let's do another one. So here we have negative 2 minus a negative 3 minus a negative 9 minus 14. So negative 2, don't mess with that. Minus a negative is plus a positive. Minus a negative is plus a positive. And then you have minus 14, that's plus negative 14. Okay, so I'm going to reorder this and put negative 2 next to negative 14. Those have a common sign. And then I'm going to put 3 and 9 together. And then basically, negative plus negative is negative. 2 plus 14 is 16. And then plus 3 plus 9 is 12. So now we know the answer would be negative because negative 16 has a larger absolute value. And you're just going to do 16 minus 12. I don't think you need a vertical subtraction for that. It's just going to be 4. So this would end up being a negative 4 as the answer. Okay, let's just do one more. So here we have negative 5 minus a negative 17, minus 8, minus 9, minus a negative 4. So negative 5, don't mess with that. And then minus a negative is plus a positive. And then we're subtracting away 8, so that's plus negative 8. We're subtracting away 9, so that's plus negative 9. And then minus a negative is plus a positive. Okay, so I'm going to rearrange this and say that we have 17 plus 4, and then plus negative 5, and then plus negative 8, and then plus negative 9. So 17 plus 4, again, if you need to, you can just do a vertical addition. 7 plus 4 is 11. 1 down, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So that's going to be 21. And then for this one, Negative plus negative plus negative is a negative. And then we'll think about 5 plus 8, that's 13. And then plus 9, let's just do that off to the side. 3 plus 9 is going to be 12. 2 down, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So that would be negative 22. I think we can all see that 21 plus negative 22 would be negative 1. But again, to go with the official procedure, we know that this would be negative because negative 22 has a larger absolute value. And so then you would just do the larger absolute value, which is 22, minus the smaller, which is 21. And so this is going to be the negative of 22 minus 21 is 1. So basically negative 1 for the final answer. All right, let's take a look at an alternative way to think about why subtracting away a negative becomes adding a positive. We saw this with a pattern. 
I'm going to give you one other approach to use. There are many available. Some people will show this as taking away a debt. Some people, instead of using a horizontal number line like I'm going to use here, you'll see a vertical number line, and maybe they'll use something like temperatures, so a positive and a negative temperature. Again, lots of different ways to think about this. So we're not going to actually do a number line subtraction if that's what you're thinking. What I'm going to do is think about the distance between two points on a number line. So let's start out with point A. And that's going to refer to four. Let me highlight this as I go. So point A refers to four on the number line and point B refers to one on the number line. Okay. So if I ask you for the distance between those two points, what am I asking for? Well, if I go from B to A or from A to B, how far do I need to travel? And remember, when we think about distance, like we talked about in the lesson on absolute value, it's non-negative. So it's either zero, meaning I get in my car and I don't go anywhere, or it's some positive value. So I go somewhere. If A is your house and B is the coffee shop, well, if I go from A to B, so from my house to the coffee shop, let's say that's three miles. On the return trip, when I go from B to A and I'm going back, well, my car's odometer doesn't say, okay, this is negative three miles because we're on a return trip. No, I go three miles there and I come three miles back. So the distance is three either way. So that's why you see this set up like that. So we can show this as the distance between A and and B as being equal to three. Now, what's another way to do this? Your book will give you a subtraction formula that involves the absolute value. I'm gonna keep this simple, and I'm just gonna say that we're gonna subtract the larger number minus the smaller, just for the sake of this lesson, to keep it simple. So I'm gonna say this could also be four minus one, which would give us three. So I can do it with subtraction, larger minus smaller, or I can go through and manually count, either going from B to A, one, two, three, or from A to B, one, two, three. Again, don't worry about the direction, it's just how far am I traveling? So we can see that the distance between A and B on this number line can be found as four minus one, which is gonna give us three. So let's go into something we already looked at. So what about four minus a negative three, which becomes four plus three, which equals seven? We're gonna show this using the distance between these two points. Now, instead of this point B being at one, it's gonna be at negative three. Point A will still be at four. So let me highlight this and this, and then this and this. So let's think about the formula we just had. The distance between A and B, we saw a moment ago, we had four and then we had one, so we did four minus one, larger minus smaller. So now what I'm gonna do is four minus a negative three. So again, larger minus smaller. We know that negative three is smaller than four because negative three lies to the left of four on the number line. So this right here, if I went through and counted, starting from four, well, I would go one, two, three, four. So at zero, I've traveled four units. And then to get to negative three, I've got to go another one, two, three units, okay? So that means that this distance right here is four. So from right here to right here, and then this distance right here is three. So from right here to right here. So I basically take that starting number, which is four, and then I'm gonna add on another three. So how could I look at that and get that? Well, I need this part right here, which is the four, and then I need to add the opposite of whatever this negative number is to get this plus three, or to tack on an additional three to get the total distance. So this statement, four minus a negative three, becomes four plus three, which becomes seven, as the answer. Now, looking at another one, let's say that we had point A, now that's gonna be at negative one. So A, that point is at negative one, point B will now be at negative six. Well, I can still use the same strategy. So the distance between A and B would be what? Take the larger number, in this case it's negative one, negative one is to the right of negative six, so it's the larger number, and then minus a negative six. So I'm just subtracting the larger minus the smaller. So this should give me the distance between these two points. So looking at this and just counting, I can see that if I go from B to A or A to B, it doesn't matter, one, two, three, four, five. That's my expectation. So I should get a five here. But how do I go from negative one minus a negative six to five? Well, I'm gonna have to change this minus a negative to plus a positive. So we'd have negative one plus six, which would give us five.